Ladies and gentlemen, your honors, the Honorable Judy M. Foote, Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador, and Mr. Howard Foote. Thank you. Please be seated. <laughs> Honorable and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my name is David Brown, Private Secretary to the Lieutenant Governor, and I will be your Master of Ceremonies for today's happy ceremony. On behalf of their honors and the Premier, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this investiture ceremony to recognize the recipients of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador. The ceremony will commence with an address by Her Honor, ladies and gentlemen, Her Honor, the Honorable Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador and Chancellor of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Judy M. Foote. Thank you, David. We begin today's ceremony by respectfully acknowledging the province of Newfoundland and Labrador as ancestral homelands of many diverse populations of indigenous peoples who have contributed to 9,000 years of history, including the Beothic on the island of Newfoundland. Today, this province is home to diverse populations of indigenous and other people. We also acknowledge with respect the diverse histories and cultures of the Mi'kmaq, Innu, and Inuit. Premier Ball, Order of Newfoundland and Labrador recipients, family and friends of the recipients, ministers and members of the House of Assembly who have recipients here today from their districts, members of the Advisory Council for the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador. Welcome to Government House for the 13th investiture of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador. It is always an honor for me to recognize the citizens of our provinces at Government House for their contributions and their accomplishments and their achievements. And I do so today, not only as Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador, but as Chancellor of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador. As I always say, Government House belongs to the people of our province. So it's a fitting setting to celebrate and appreciate the eight individuals being invested into the Order today. The Order, by the way, is the highest provincial honor as a, and as a part of the official honor system of Canada. The order was first approved by Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, in 2003, and the honor was first bestowed in 2004. The eight exemplary Newfoundlanders and Labradorians invested today join a prestigious group of 110 individuals who have become members of the order since it was established. Every year since, Newfoundlanders and Labradorians have been recognized for demonstrating excellence and achievement in any field of endeavor that benefits in an extraordinary manner Newfoundland and Labrador and its residents. This year's order of Newfoundland and Labrador recipients meet that criteria unequivocally. You are each extraordinary members of our community. We are so proud and fortunate that you call Newfoundland and Labrador home, that you go out of your way to improve the lives of fellow citizens. You are shining examples for others to follow. It is also fitting that you are being invested today, Bell Let's Talk Day, when mental health is profiled and the need to do away with the stigma associated with it. Each of you, in your own way, do just that, through your work and your volunteer efforts. Here at Government House, we will be lighting uh, it blue tonight to help raise awareness about mental health and mental illness and the need to talk about it. One in five Canadians experience mental health issues and illness in any given year. The eight individuals being invested into the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador are Jim Burton, Elaine Dobbin, Robert Lyle, Helen Murphy, Miles Murphy, Susan Rose, Gordon Slade, and Bruce Templeton. Unfortunately, Ms. Dobbin and Mr. Lyle were unable to be with us today. Their presentations will take place at a later date. Jim, thank you for your tireless humanitarian efforts through organizations like Hobear, which removes financial barriers for the people of Newfoundland and Labrador, thousands in fact, 
who need to travel for health care. Thank you. Helen, thank you for your humanitarian work that focuses on inclusion for vulnerable populations affected by mental health, addictions, poverty, and homelessness. Thank you. Miles, thank you for being a trailblazing leader and advocate for the deaf community through work that facilitates essential connections, especially between the deaf community and our healthcare system. Thank you. Susan, thank you for your commitment to human rights and your instrumental work that made our province a national leader for educators in the K-12 system to have access to LBGTQ plus sensitivity training. Thank you. Gordon, thank you for your dedication to volunteerism by working on the important preservation of culturally and significant, historically significant sites and regions of Newfoundland and Labrador. Thank you. Bruce, the only living Canadian in the International Hall, Santa Claus Hall of Fame. <laughs> Thank you for your volunteerism and your initiatives, those that you champion and support, such as Rotary International's and Polio Now. Thank you. Thank you to Elaine, whose longtime philanthropic contributions to Memorial University and a number of nonprofit organizations improve the lives of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians through healthcare advancements and medical research. Thank you to Mr. Robert Lyle, whose volunteerism and humanitarian efforts made him a founding father of the Labrador Friendship Center, which seeks to provide the best possible services to enrich the lives of the Inuit, Innu, and Métis of Labrador. Undoubtedly, the Advisory Council of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador faces a difficult task whenever they have to review all of the nominations. This particular time, they reviewed 95 nominations, from which eight were recommended. Nominations that are received are also carried forward to the next year in the event an individual does not become invested. Please join me as Chancellor of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador in taking this opportunity to thank the members of the Council for their commitment and diligence as they fulfilled a very difficult task. And I would ask those who are with us today to please stand. Elizabeth Day, Susan Knight, Sterling Payton, the Honorable Scott Reed, <coughs> Elder Kelvin White, and Krista Quinlan, who serves as a secretary for the uh, Advisory Council. Thank you so much. Thank you for all that you do that enable us to get this right and always appreciate the efforts that are made by Newfoundlanders and Labradorians to make life better for those who live in our province, but also in our country and internationally. So today, we're very proud and grateful for the time that our recipients invest as ambassadors, leaders, role models, change makers, and humanitarians. Thank you so much. Let us now proceed with the investiture. Thank you, Your Honor. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Jim Burton. <clears throat> Born in Gander, Jim Burton grew up in Goose Bay and currently lives in St. Phillips. He is an entrepreneur who maintains a number of businesses and has, a real, and has a, been a real estate professional for 30 years. As a licensed pilot, he owns and operates a seasonal airline as well as a number of other businesses. Jim has been an active Rotarian with the Rotary Club of St. John's Northwest for 12 years, and under his leadership, their annual gala event has grown to raise $250,000 annually where the funds are used to support community charities and projects. Since 2011, he has sat on the board of directors for a national charity called Hope Air, which helps remove financial barriers for thousands of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians to travel for health care reasons free of charge. Prior to his involvement, Hope Air provided between 70 and 88 flights per year. Now, over 1,500 flights are provided to residents of our province each year. 
Jim has also served on several levels of volunteer committees within the Salvation Army of Newfoundland and Labrador, including its advisory board and the Springdale Street Redevelopment Committee. Jim has served on the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation for Atlantic Canada Board of Directors and champions fundraising efforts to benefit Daffodil Place. Jim Burton's contributions to society span humanitarian, volunteer, environmental, and entrepreneurial efforts. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Jim Burton. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Helen Murphy. <clears throat> Born in fresh water, Helen Murphy has spent a number of years as a music teacher in the communities of Mount Pearl, Carbonair, and St. Mary's Bay. She taught music and choral singing in schools and supported church choirs. Helen has also served as a community educator for several First Nations communities in Northern Canada and worked with the community groups such as the Rabbit Town Community Association and the Nascapi Montane Innu Association. She regularly brings attention to environmental responsibilities and is involved with the Social Action Committee's work that has touched on low-level flying in Labrador, refugee legislation, fisheries, and women's equality issues. Helen has also worked with organizations including the Provincial Association Against Family Violence, the, the Public Health Agency of Canada, and Stella Circle. With the Public Health Agency of Canada, she brought perspective to issues such as fetal alcohol spectrum disorder and was instrumental in coordinating gender and FASD training within the province. Through her leadership as the volunteer music director of Stella Circle Inclusion Choir, Helen helps individuals become more confident and empowered in their daily living. The Inclusion Choir has over 100 performances to its credit and is a non-audition choir that consists of Stella Circle's participants, staff, and volunteers. It has been sought out for per performances by the Mental Health Commission of Canada and Festival 500. The choir recently co-wrote a song with Juno award-winning uh, composer Amelia Kern. Helen Murphy's contributions to society spans her work on inclusiveness for people who feel marginalized because of mental health, addictions, poverty, and homelessness issues. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Helen Murphy. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Miles Murphy. Born on Belle Island, Miles Murphy had to leave his family at the age of six to attend school in Montreal as it was the only education option for deaf children in Newfoundland and Labrador at the time. 
Following his early education, he went on to teach American Sign Language and Deaf Studies at St. Mary's University, Memorial University, and the College of the North Atlantic. Miles was a notable contributor in the creation of the Canadian Dictionary of American Sign Language, and in 1991, he collaborated with the Canadian Radio, Television, and Telecommunications Commission to bring telephone relay services for the deaf to the Atlantic provinces. He was also a leader in the establishment of closed captioning for CBC's Evening News in 1995. Miles provides an essential connection between the deaf community and the healthcare system, collaborating with Memorial University School of Medicine in two groundbreaking studies, one on palliative care for deaf people and one on how deaf patients express physical pain. In 2005, he established, coordinated, and instructed the first literacy program for deaf adults in St. John's. Miles also currently evaluates sign language skills of educators, staff, and students for the Provincial Department of Education. He is involved in one way or another with a myriad of local, provincial, and national disability organizations. In 2002, he was awarded the Queen's Golden Jubilee Medal, and in 2012, he was awarded the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal for his community work. Miles Murphy's contributions to society spans his efforts to in ensure inclusion and accessibility for disability, or, uh, disability organizations with a focus on the deaf community. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Miles Murphy. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Susan Rose. Susan Rose started working as a teacher in the provincial public school system in 1985 and has always been an outspoken supporter for some of the most vulnerable groups in Newfoundland and Labrador. She recognized stigma and discrimination against LGBTQ2S people at a very early stage through her work in the public school system. Susan decided to use her voice to start building more inclusive communities at a time when few were willing to risk their employment or be fairly unfairly criticized for doing so. She developed the Newfoundland Amazon Network, known as NAN, a support group for lesbians living in the province that, are included, uh, that included a free call-in service provided at her own expense. The call-in line created an opportunity for lesbian women to talk to someone, someone anytime they needed support. In 2013, she was instrumental in assisting the Provincial Department of Education and Early Childhood Development in providing a pro province-wide LGBTQ2S training initiative for the K-12 school system. As a result, Newfoundland and Labrador became the first province in Canada to provide a training program for educators on inclusion and acceptance of LGBTQ2S community members. She is also an active member and current Vice President of Equality for Gays and Lesbians Everywhere, Canada, and she volunteers with the Canada Human Rights Trust. Susan Rose's contributions to society span her support for the LGBTQ2S children and adults by creating supportive environments through training and education initiatives with a focus on K-12 education. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Susan Rose. Thank <laughs> you. 
To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Gordon Swade. Born in North Harbor, Gordon Slade started his career as a federal and provincial public servant working in the areas of fisheries conservation and protection. He became the federal economic development co coordinator for the Newfoundland region in 1982 before his work as a vice president of Newfoundland Division for the Atlantic Canada Opportunities Agency in 1987. In that capacity, he played a pivotal role in provincial oil and gas ocean technology. He later became the CEO of One Ocean. Based at the Marine Institute of Memorial University, One Ocean was a li liaison organization to connect the fishing industry with the oil and gas industry. Gordon founded the Battle Harbor Historic Trust in 1998 to preserve a culturally and historically significant region of Labrador. He has volunteered to support initiatives including the restoration of Port Union, the Rhine Premises National Historic Site, and the Red Bay National Historic Site, now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. In 2006, Gordon became the chair of the Shorefast Foundation's board. In that capacity, he has helped develop key partnerships to preserve the local traditions and knowledge of Fogo Island, while developing an innovative model for sustainable development and growth of coastal communities. He is proactively involved in the implementation of the Shorefast New Ocean Ethics Program and the Fogo Island Research Station. In 2005, he was invested into the Order of Canada, and in 2014, he received an honorary doctorate of laws from Memorial University. Gordon Slade's contribution to society spans his volunteerism, leading to the preservation of culturally and historically significant regions of the province. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Gordon Slade. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Bruce Templeton. Bruce Templeton is the only living Canadian in the International Santa Claus Hall of Fame. He is a nationally best-selling author of four books that chronicle his collected personal experiences from years spent assisting Santa. Since 1978, Bruce has made over 1,500 visits to children, community groups, organizations, hospitals, palliative care units, and retirement homes. He was also involved in the downtown St. John's Christmas Parade for 40 years, where he was instrumental in establishing the parade's food drive effort, the largest single gathering of food each year. Bruce makes the magical flight to the North Pole a reality for 18 children each Christmas. The flight, arranged by PAL Airlines and promoted by Hits FM, is made possible because of Bruce's unwavering commitment to create memorable experiences for children. Santa boards the plane on, on arrival to the North Pole, covered in snow, ready to answer one question from each child before giving them a gift. But Bruce spreads the message that it's your presence that counts, not the presents. As an avid Rotarian, Bruce self selflessly donates his proceeds from all his books to Rotary International's End Polio Now initiative, but not before getting his funds matched by organizations like the Gates Foundation. As a result, Bruce has ensured more than 350,000 children throughout the world have received polio vac vaccinations, and the initiative has, so far, managed to, to reduce the prevalence of polio to only two remaining countries, Pakistan and Afghanistan. Bruce also volunteers his time to numerous other organizations 
uh, organizations, including Scouts Canada, the United Way, the John Howard Society, the Autism Society of Newfoundland and Labrador, and the Bowering Park Foundation. Bruce Templeton's contributions to society as a community leader and humanitarian spans his work as Santa's assistance for over 40 years, making a difference locally and internationally. To receive the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador, Bruce Templeton. Premier's going to speak. Premier's going to speak. The ceremony will conclude with an address by the Honourable Premier, ladies and gentlemen, the Honourable Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, Dwight Ball. Thank you, uh, David. And like everyone else, it's my absolute pleasure to be here today as we recognize once again eight remarkable individuals being invested into the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador. Now I will tell you the Advisory Council, I know there are members here today and I really appreciate the work you do and I want to welcome you as well. You had a tough job because there are so many remarkable Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. Uh, the choices that you've made with the eight Newfoundlanders and Labradorians that are being invested today are all great choices. So thank you for the work you've done. And thank you to their honors for hosting us again today, to the family and friends. And we had some time to share with our recipients last night, and even got some more insight into what was happening in their lives, in their lives, and that made them so passionate about the work that they've done. But I also want to recognize in the last few days, this region of our province have been through a different challenge. And we have many people in our community that they too have stepped up in those challenges, making sure that their neighbors were taken care of, making sure that it was food to go around for some that needed some extra. We had people that showed up and really were not eager to leave. <laughs> Matter of fact, a few of them said to me, if you need support, if you ever go through something like this again, don't phone the general, just call us individually. <laughs> <laughs> But that is who we are, and we dealt with the recent challenges with some humor, we've learned some lessons, but we send a message to the world how we tackle things in Newfoundland and Labrador. Now I could reiterate and repeat some of the great things that have been mentioned already about the six people that are here with us today and the two that are not here, but collectively when you think about them as a group, and they join, as Her Honor mentioned, over 100 recipients already. There is a lot of common themes, and I spoke to the group last night and mentioned about you're all very passionate about the things that you believe in. Some of you was education, some of you was health care, some of you was violence against women, making sure that people could get, could get the supports that they needed. Some of you was about making sure the province was a better, stronger place to live, but collectively you have all done that. Some of you are in a position that you could actually make donations financially. Some of you, you did things in a different way. But each and every one of you, as I told the group last night, the biggest contribution that you could give was your time, and you did it. But beyond all of these eight individuals that we're recognizing here today, I see a lot of family and friends. And as I watched each and every one of you get introduced today, there was a sense of pride on each of your faces. But I know that pride was shared with the many friend, friends and family that you have joining you here today.
Because when you guys were running off to meetings and doing things in your community, you were leaving behind family and friends. You were doing the day-to-day -day things that needed to be done to keep the other things in your life moving as well. So I think we need to recognize those people as well, because it really is a team effort, isn't it? So was it? Yeah. So if it's Jim Burton and the things that he's done with, that he's done with Holly, the work that he's done, or Miss Murphy, who we had a great chat last night, and we really got to know you a lot better as we were sitting. We were kind of seatmates last night, and it was really remarkable, the stories that we were able to share individually. And to Mr. Murphy, you know, these are, when you look at leaders in certain aspects, the changes that is happening in our society, Mr. Murphy, I will tell you, is a true leader. He changed the lives of many others that we all see now as, as being molded into our society, but it wasn't like that for Mr. Murphy at a young age. So indeed, he was a leader. And to Susan Rose, we all know and see that smile on her face because the smile represents, again, the passion that continues within you for the things that you strongly believe in. And to you, Gordon, you know, I've known Gordon for quite a while and the work that he's been able to do in making sure that our heritage, the economic development, the things that we sometimes people take for granted that to recognize. And when you look at Newfoundland and Labrador, the things that you've been part of are now not just provincial gems, but they're known nationally and internationally. And to, and to Bruce, well, no one could get upset with Santa Claus. <laughs> but I want to remind you that it's just not Santa Claus. Bruce has had many more achievements and accomplishments outside of the smiles that he puts on people's faces. And yes, I wouldn't mind being an elf on a shelf for you, Santa. <laughs> 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 and of course, Elaine Dobbin, who is not here, but her role with Memorial University and the work that she's done with autism. And of course, Robert Royal. Without Robert, being a founding member of the things that he's been involved in in Labrador. Labrador is a better place than our province. Our province is a better place because of Robert's work, and I know that personally because of the work that he's done. So I'll conclude my remarks today as Premier of the province by saying, without question, our province is a better place to live because of this year's eight recipients. And I want to thank you on behalf of every single Newfoundlander and Labradorian for the work that you've done. But more than that, there are people that are listening, the people who will look at you and read your resumes. You are now an inspiration for others because the province knows you a little better today because of this ceremony. So you leave here today with an extra decoration and one that I am extremely proud you've been part of. You deserve it. It looks great on you. <laughs> Share it with your family and friends. Share it with your communities. This province is extremely proud of the work that you've done and I know you will continue to do. So thank you very much. Thank you, Premier. Uh, following the ceremony, uh, their, their honors and the Premier will receive recipients and guests in the, um, in the, the ballroom just directly behind us here. Um, uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise for the singing of our provincial anthem, the Ode to Newfoundland, and remain standing uh, following it for the departure of the, the, their honors, the premiers, the premier, and the newest members of the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll, we'll depart through this door. We'll move those flags out of your way. And uh, we'll, we'll just uh, gather in the hallway prior to the uh, receiving line. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It worked. Yeah, yeah, it worked. Oh, yeah, Jesus.